what's going on everybody uh it is time i know i'm running about a minute or so behind um but that's okay uh, actually i think it helps facebook because so many other people are trying to other churches are running live at the exact same time staggering some of the start times i think helps um, if not it's just an excuse for me to be a couple minutes behind so uh, but anyway, while we are waiting for everyone to get the notification that we are live, that we are on, um, I just want to, and knowing too, that this video does get posted to YouTube. And so even if you don't catch these first uh, minute or two uh, during the live broadcast, whenever you rewatch this video or uh, watch it later from the beginning, you get to see this stuff. So with that in mind, I'm a big fan of breakfast. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I am. I love breakfast, uh, but not like, you know, fancy breakfast. I just really love cereal, I guess. Maybe that's the, it's not that I love breakfast. I love cereal for breakfast. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I have stumbled upon one of the best cereal combinations uh, that I've ever had. Okay. Uh, you take, and I, and okay. So I'm going to drop some name brand cereals. And if your household is anything like mine, uh, we very rarely, uh, growing up, especially, we very rarely bought name brand cereal. We just bought the giant bags, uh, Malto meal, right? But, um, uh, and even most of the time, we, we still buy the big bags. But that being said, I have stumbled upon this excellent combination of cereal. I love it. The boys like it. Lauren loves it. Everyone in our house thinks this is awesome. And it's not full of sugar. It has some in it, I'm sure. All right. So you take Kellogg's Crispix. If you haven't had Crispix by themselves, they are awesome. So it's like rice on one side, and uh, I think it's it's wheat on the other. But anyway, um, Crispix is awesome, far superior to regular Chex. Okay, but anyway, so you take Crispix and you mix it with multigrain Cheerios, and it is perfect, and it is awesome. So if you have a chance, if you're a cereal fan, uh, or just looking to mix up your morning routine. I would recommend that cereal combination. All right, so go to your local store, grab them next time you're you're out there, and you can splurge on the name brand stuff, and uh, you will not be disappointed. All right. So now that my cereal advertisement is out of the way, uh, we got about our our normal seven are watching, so we will continue and move on to our announcements. All right. Uh, so. Uh, Jim's Norman's Bible study class tomorrow night, 7 p.m. He will continue with Judges, uh, and that is at 6.30 on Zoom. Uh, if you want the link to that class, uh, Jim will post a reminder right before the class starts. Um, you can click that and log in if you already have the Zoom program downloaded. If you've never used Zoom yet, um, you can... Uh, you're going to want to do that a little bit earlier so your computer or smartphone has time to install that and uh, and everything. But tomorrow at 6.30, uh, Judges Chapter 7. And those videos are also uh, normally put onto uh, YouTube as well. You can watch them there if you missed the class. Uh, we didn't catch uh, the one from two weeks ago, and last week they took Thursday night off. So uh, just know... Jim's class is back, Judges Chapter 7, okay? Judges Chapter 7, all right? Um, what else is going on? Operation Christmas Child, okay? The drop-off final day is Sunday, okay? This coming Sunday, all right? You need to get those boxes in. If you took them, please get them filled up. Uh, and again, if you wanted to get in on that, you can do that online as well. Uh, the link to that is on our Facebook page for our um, uh, I guess our, our online goal page is what it's called, our goal page. Our goal this year was 60 boxes, all right? And I know maybe that was a little optimistic uh, given what's happening in the world right now, but 60 boxes both online and in person, that is our goal. I'll show you the, the uh, official, uh, I'll reveal the official amount done on Sunday morning, but I think you can see it for yourself on our goal page if you want and see how many we've done online. And then we have quite a few that have been turned into the church. But just remember, Sunday morning, we need those boxes in, okay? Um, also on Sunday at 6 p.m., Sunday evening at Emmanuel Baptist Church is our community Thanksgiving service. 
Uh, it's going to be awesome. John James is there to share a message of hope and, and just kind of share a little bit about his testimony. If you don't know who he is, I don't want to spoil it for you. It's a surprise, uh, but he has quite a story. I actually got to meet him yesterday, uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's really cool how he and his family ended up here in Bluefield, West Virginia. So uh, he's from Australia, and now he's here. So uh, you don't want to miss what he has to say. If you're not comfortable or able to go to that service in person, again, that is Thursday, or excuse me, that is Sunday night at 6 p.m. at Emmanuel Baptist Church. You can find the service and watch it online from their Facebook page as well. So, uh, so please find Emmanuel Baptist Church on Facebook. Um, and you can watch their live stream service from there, or you can go to their website, and I, I don't know if it gets posted on their website or not, uh, but their website will direct you to their Facebook page, because uh, I think their name online is a little bit harder to find. Um, but you do not want to miss this community Thanksgiving service. It is a big deal. Uh, all the, well, the Greater Princeton Ministerial Association puts that on, and it is just an amazing time of churches and believers from all different backgrounds coming together uh, and just worshiping and being thankful uh, together. And that's, honestly, that's something we need right now. We need the church to come together, even if it's just for a Thanksgiving service, all right, to put all the differences aside, come together and worship and be thankful. I can't really think of anything more poignant than that. So that is Sunday night, 6 p.m. at Emmanuel Baptist Church, all right? Also happening uh, in our community is the Salvation Army uh, bell ringing uh, and the angel tree. Uh, you can uh, grab a, uh, a name off of the local angel trees. I think they're at, I know the Salvation Army has them, and I think you can get them at Walmart as well. Uh, but you can contact the Salvation Army for more information about that. But the angel tree is great, local children, it has their names, their age, and has their Christmas wish list, so uh, you can really make a difference in the life of a local child, uh, not just the Christmas child stuff, which goes all over the world, but uh, with a local kid, too, all right? Uh, so, and also, they're doing virtual kettles this year. Uh, you will not see nearly as many bell ringers out and about. They are there, uh, but not as many as in years past, but they need to make up uh, most of their budget comes from this season and comes from the red kettles. So you can catch out, uh, catch those kettles online, uh, redkettlewv.com, uh, select Mercer County. So um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, our annual business meeting is this, <clears throat> excuse me, Wednesday, December 2nd uh, at 6.30 p.m., it will replace this time. Uh, we will live stream that so you can watch from home and you can follow along. Uh, if you want to vote but can't come in person, uh, please check our Facebook page. And there's a link right at the top. It's the first announcement. It's the first post on our page. Uh, and there's a link to find the ballot. You can download that or print that right at home, fill it out and then you can mail that ballot in. Now we need to get that before the meeting for your vote to count. So if you want to do that, please, please, please print that out and get it in as soon as possible and it will be counted. Um, if you wanna come in person, that's fine too. It will be in the sanctuary. So uh, I think those are all of the announcements. So as always, if you have prayer requests, please uh, go ahead and type them up. Uh, during this time, and I am actually typing out some now that I just got. So uh, go ahead and put prayer requests in the comments or send uh, a message to the church or send me a message directly if you have my information, uh, and I will add those uh, during our prayer time at the end. So with, with all the announcements and things out of the way, uh, let's get to it. Tonight we're talking about loving your enemies, right? That's a very common thing we talk about, at least here at Landmark and, and I'm sure in, in a lot of churches uh, all over the world because it's such a big deal. 
there's a reason we spend so much time talking about it because it's a big deal. It's something we should do, but it's something so difficult, right? It's so simple in concept, but so difficult to do. So uh, we're going to spend some more time talking about it. Uh, hopefully, the more we discuss it, the easier it becomes to, to let it sink in and to start making small adjustments. Um, the more you love your enemies, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. Uh, like so many other things in, in faith and in life, the more you do it, the easier it is. Uh, but taking that first step is normally really hard. So, but anyway... <clears throat> Speaking of, of, of that and, and things in the kingdom of God, right? There are so many things uh, about uh, Christianity or about being a Christian or about the kingdom of God that are completely the opposite. Some people would even say upside down, right, uh, of how people normally behave, right? The way that humans naturally, our natural tendencies, the way we want to do things normally, God almost always flips those things and says, look, you... You want to do this way, but I tell you to do it better, right? Uh, I say, you know, you say an eye for an eye, but I say love your enemies, right? Uh, so many things. And Jesus is a master of this. He, he flips things or he puts a new perspective on things, and, and he just really cuts to the heart of the human condition and, and really shows us that we can be better. And this instruction here from Luke chapter 6 verses 27 and 28. This is a very clear example of this. When when things in the kingdom of God are the opposite of, of normal human behavior, right? Um, and this is what it says, Luke 6, 27 and 28. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you, right? Do good to those who hate you. That is not a normal human response. That is supernatural, right? Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, right? And not like, oh, bless their hearts. Like, okay, a real blessing. Bless the people who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. And I'm not talking... Uh, right, imprecatory psalms and prayers, which basically means praying that bad things happen to them, right? That's not exactly what Jesus means here in Luke chapter 6. And there is a time and a place for those kind of prayers, right? Um, but uh, pray for those who hurt you. Pray that God would change their life. Pray that they would, uh, you know, that good things would happen in their lives. Pray for positive things for them. Uh, as the kids say, send good vibes, right? Uh, except vibes aren't real, okay? But prayer. Pray good things for the for those people, for your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you, right? So simple to say. Incredibly simple to say. So simple to say that I probably... I would estimate that 80% of the things that I talk about here at Landmark focus on that. Uh, right, uh, and I haven't done the actual math. Uh, if anybody out there wants to, I'll send you all of my sermons. You can see how often we talk about that, right? But it's so simple to talk about it, and we talk all the time. But but how do we do that, right? What do we do, right? Well, well, here's a, a, another way to think about this, right? God lives these verses with us. See, that's the thing. When you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit. In the fancy word is indwells, right? It comes inside of you. The spirit of God is in you. It's in your your subconscious and conscious mind. It, it it does some things. Things change, right? You now have the power to do things differently that you may not have done before. You now have the ability to choose to love somebody who hates you. You can now choose that because of the spirit of God. And so, like. God lives out these verses with us. We're not just trying to do this on our own. If you are a Christian person, then God is, is in your corner helping you to do this. right? Because, and, and here's the thing. Not only does God give us the ability to do this, he's already set the example. right? God has already done this for us. He's already done this with us. He's already showed us what this looks like. Think about it. We, uh, according to Scripture, 
right? And when we go back to, to Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and we get the Ten Commandments and we get the laws uh, of the Old Testament, when we see how God sets up the system, right, we, we recognize right off the bat like that sin puts us at odds with God. We are enemies of God. As soon as you sin, you and God are now enemies, right? It's over. Like the relationship is now damaged. God being perfect and holy and sinless is on one side and you and your sin is on the other side. And we should be God's enemies because of sin. That's the way it works. Read the Old Testament. It lays that out very clearly. So we should be God's enemies because we sin all the time, sometimes on purpose, sometimes on accident, but we do it. But God loves us. See, God loves us enough to create in the Old Testament a system of sacrifice, right? To kind of, uh, you know, get rid of sin through through shedding the blood of these animals. And then in the New Testament, we see Jesus come as the perfect sacrifice to, to end the entire system, to it all for the entire world, right? So, so we should be enemies of God, and yet He loves us enough, right? John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son, or only begotten Son, right? That whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life, right? So God loves us, and we were His enemies. We were on opposite sides. We did not do things the way that God wanted us to do things. From the beginning, basically from the beginning of time, we have been at odds with God, and yet he loves us. Our actions often show hatred towards God or his ways. And maybe if you feel like hatred is too strong, uh, it's not, but disdain at the very least, right? Or we're rebellious, if you want to look at it like that. Like very, very rarely, as in like almost never, do we do things the way God wants us to do them without the help of the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, just think about it. People who don't have God, very rarely will they do what God wants them to do. Um, and and if they do, it's very rarely on purpose. And if it is, there's normally ulterior motives, right? It's just the nature of being a person. Our actions show hatred toward God or become forms of cursing God, as, as this verse says, because we choose our desires over his. We say, you know what, God? Uh, I know what's best for me. I appreciate the effort. I'm, I'm glad you have a plan and a purpose for my life, but I'm going to take it from here. Whatever. You know what? Get out of here. I'll handle it. Right? But God is good to us. And he blesses us. He, he's, he's good to the, do good to those who hate you, right? God did that. Bless those who curse you. God did that. Pray for those who hurt you. In Hebrews, uh, the, the author explains that, God, that Jesus is intercessing or essentially praying for us on the Father's, uh, praying on our behalf to the Father, right? Like he prays for those who hurt him. Right, God already did this. And so the Holy Spirit can come and show us how to do these things because God's already done them. So again, are these verses easy to follow? Not always. Some people are much easier to love than others, right? You may have people in your life who hate you, and maybe it's because of your faith. You know, if you're going to be hated for something, that's probably a pretty good thing to be hated for, right? So maybe people hate you uh, because of your faith. Or maybe they mistreat you because you don't fit the mold of the person they think you should be, right? They think you should act a certain way or live a certain way, and you chose not to. And there's some, there's some conflict there, right? Maybe people don't like you because of the way you voted. Maybe people don't like you because of the things that you said. Maybe people don't like you because they believed a lie that somebody else told them about you. Maybe people are cursing you um, or are, you know, hurting you. 
for a variety of reasons. People do that. It's what people do, right? But when we treat our enemies the way Jesus describes and the way that he did, I mean, Jesus treated his enemies this way, right? When we do that, we become more and more and more like Jesus. And being like Jesus is the best possible option in this life. It really is. It's not the easiest option, but it's certainly the best. And so, I mean, again, we talk about this all the time. It's so hard to do. And it gets easier over time. Talk to some some Christians who've been doing this for a while, and they'll they'll tell you that it's easier the more that you do it. But taking those first couple steps, loving those who have hurt you, and loving those who hurt you does not mean that you stay in relationship or proximity to those people so they can continue hurting you. Uh, I know sometimes the scripture is mis misunderstood or misinterpreted to mean that. Um, that's not what it means. You don't have to let people keep hurting you, but uh, you can pray for those people from a safe distance. Uh, you know what I mean? You can pray that God changes their lives and that good things happen to them without allowing them to continue to hurt you. But uh, but that's that's the deal. This is once you start taking the steps to put this into action, you would be amazed how much easier your life is. You'd also be amazed how much less drama you have in your life, right? Where you're just, you know what? People hurt your feelings all the time. And, and as you get better and better at loving your enemies and doing good to those who hate you and blessing those who curse you and praying for those who, who hurt you, the more you do that, the more this stuff starts to roll off your back. I'm not saying you're never going to get hurt again, uh, but I'm saying the recovery is much easier when you can pray for that person, when you can want good things for somebody else. Okay, it's so true. So here's the homework. We have homework almost every Wednesday night. So here it is for tonight. Make a list, all right? Get a pen, get a pencil, get your phone out and, and type a reminder to yourself. Put it on your calendar, set an alarm, uh, whatever. You Make a little no, sticky note uh, on your computer if you're at your computer. Whatever it is that you need to do, maybe take your pen and write on your calendar, okay? Or if you have a journal or, or whatever it is you need to do. This is super important. Uh, I can't see what you're doing, so I don't know if you're actually doing this or not. I hope that you are coming through with your homework. The reason I give it to you is because it's good to practice these things. And it, it, so um, I pray that you are doing them. I, it would be awesome if you are. So get your writing utensil and something to write on or, or get ready to type this stuff out. But th And this, may be, this is going to be the easiest part of any assignment I've ever given you, okay? Make a list of three people who you struggle to love, <laughs> right? And some of you got like, you're like, look, there's not enough paper, right? But some of you, this may be hard for a few of you, but, but most of us can come up with three people that we struggle to love. Not three people that we hate, not three people that hate us necessarily. Okay, maybe that's true of your list, but just three people who you struggle to love for whatever reasons those may be, all right? You got that list? You wrote it down? Okay, good. All right. Three people who you struggle to love. Then next to their name, maybe you got to write a little dash or maybe an arrow, maybe a line. All right. Whatever the, the case is, right? Next to their name, I don't want you to write why they're hard to love. I don't want you to write what they've done to hurt you. I don't want you to write why you think they hate you or why you hate them. I want you to write down or record, type, whatever it is you need to do. Think of a very specific way to show kindness to them. Like tomorrow, whenever you see them or talk to them, like tomorrow or even tonight that might be even better some of us need to do this stuff right now while we're feeling the spirit or it's not going to happen right so uh, think of a way to show kindness to each of those people tonight 
tomorrow, okay? And then make a plan for how you're gonna do that. Make it very specific, put a time on it. Like I'm gonna call this person and say these things about them. And I'm gonna do that at nine o'clock tonight, right? Or um, I'm going to buy coffee for this person on my way to work tomorrow. When I get my coffee, I'm going to get one for them. And I'm going to do that tomorrow. And write that down. Okay. When you write it down, it helps. It's just one extra step to bring it closer to reality, to make it easier to do. Okay. And if you really, really want to make sure that you do this, tell somebody else that you're going to do these things. Okay. So think about ways to show kindness to each of those three people on your list, okay? It may be weird, right? Especially if it's maybe it's somebody you haven't talked to in a while, and maybe it's not they're not even going to receive it, right? Maybe you're going to call somebody and just tell them you love them and you're praying for them, or maybe you're just going to call them and say, look, is there anything I can pray for you about? And maybe they're not going to like that. Okay, scripture tells us that when you do that, when you're kind to your enemy, it's like heaping burning coals on their head. There's a there's a strong possibility that this will that, that they will not respond the way that you, uh, they will not respond in kind. Okay, that, that this this may not change anything about your relationship. I'm not saying that something magic is going to happen. This isn't a Hallmark movie. Okay, but this is less about what it does for them and more about what God is wanting to do to change you. Less about them, more about you. And that's that almost never happens in church. We almost never say that, okay? But this really is about God changing your life and less about what he may be doing in their life. Now, God may use this as an opportunity to change one of the life of one of these people on your list. God absolutely could do that. They needed that coffee. They needed that phone call. They needed that card. They needed that text message. They needed that whatever, right? Maybe God is working on them and, and your uh, act of kindness is what's going to push them over to the edge into the arms of grace. Maybe. I, I would be awesome if every single one of, of these acts of kindness did that. That would be an amazing move of God. But the real expectation, I guess, the reality is that it's just going to become easier for us to just do good to those who hate us, right? That's the point of this exercise, is, is not necessarily to change their life, but to change yours and to change mine. And so that's the expectation going in. Look, maybe it's going to be hard. Maybe it's going to be difficult. But God will use this to make you more and more like him. And that's really what it's all about. All right. So as we go to prayer tonight, I'm going to give you just a moment, uh, in, an extra lead in of, of quiet time, maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 seconds at the beginning of our prayer time will be kind of silent. And that's the time that I want you to pray for one of your enemies, uh, right? I want you, and it can be one of the three on the list, or it could be a fourth one. Many of us have at least four or five people that are we struggle to love, right? But we're going to pray for that enemy. It's a great way to, to, to put this into practice. And again, I'm not talking that we pray that they stop being a jerk. Uh, okay, that's not what I mean, right? I don't pray that, they're gonna, that God's going to swoop down and teach them their lesson. That's not the kind of prayers we're talking about. Pray that God would bless them. And that God would give you the strength to love them, right? And if this is hard for you, if you're really struggling with this, and you can be honest with God. Say, look, God, I, I can't even pray good things for that person, right? Well, then pray about that. <laughs> have a conversation with God and say, God, look, I know I have to do that. Give me the strength to do that. Give me the strength to love that person. Give me the strength to want good things for them, uh, right? Maybe you just have to pray and say, God, help me trust you that this is best, right? That's because it, sometimes this boils down to a trust issue. They've hurt me, God. I want I want them to hurt. I don't trust that God's ways are God's ways. That's not fair, 
right? But God's ways are better than ours. And it takes trust to lean into that. And this is an, a good way to um, exercise your trust muscles, right? God, I know this is hard, but I want good things for this person. And that's a prayer. All right. Uh, well, we are doing that. I'm going to check these real quick. Uh, all right. I see quite a few uh, of the Bogus clan have mentioned uh, some prayer requests. If you have any others, now's the great time to type them. Uh, Dana, I put you on the prayer list. Uh, Stacy, so right, Stacy Simmons. Robert and Angie. All right, I'm looking up through. All right, those are the prayer requests that I have received right now, plus the ones that I got earlier today. So, all right, we're going to go and we're going to pray. And this, this is hard to do. I know that. All right. But it's just one step closer to being more and more like Jesus. And that's really how we're going to get there. One step at a time, put one foot in front of the other. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And again, the first couple, you know, 15, 20 seconds or so is just for, for us to pray for those, to pray for one of our enemies, okay? I'm going to get my timer out. I thought it was there. Clock, there it is. All right, so 20 seconds. And then I'll come in and, and I'll pray after that. Right, let's pray again. God, we ask that you would help us to pray for our enemies tonight. And may we all take a moment, God, and to do that right now. God, we pray good things for our enemies. God, we pray that you would give us the strength to want good things for them. We pray that you would give us the strength to trust you, that your way is best. God, we, we pray that you would give us the strength to love people the way that you loved us, to, uh, to, to bless those who curse us, to want good to the for those who have hurt us to love our enemies god we ask that you would help us to do that give us the strength god especially as we enter uh, christmas season and, and our thoughts and attentions turn to you god how much do you love us that jesus would come and live on this earth and be raised as a human be born as a human child and to experience all the same things that we do and how much must you love us to step down from heaven into our mess just to prove that you care and god with that in mind at the forefront of our minds at christmas season may we find strength and encouragement to love those who we find difficult to love god we we pray also for these requests. We we pray for all those people uh, in our lives who are going to be alone this year for either for Thanksgiving or uh, Christmas, New Year's. God, uh, I can think of many who are going to be celebrating these, these holidays alone, maybe for the first time. May your presence be ever stronger in their lives at this time. We pray for uh, all these requests for Christina Cartwright's mom. We pray, God, that you would touch her body in, in a mighty way. <clears throat> we pray for Dana Steele, that she would uh, feel better and she would get a diagnosis. We pray that it's COVID negative and that it's something else. We pray for Megan Bogus, God, that you would change her heart, change her mind, and 
God, just change your life. <clears throat> we pray for Stacy Simmons and Robert and Angie Kales. Uh, we pray for uh, Helen Parrish as, and her sister. As, as these are dealing with uh, COVID, we just ask that you would heal them. Some of them are further along, and it may take a miracle, and we pray for that. We pray for Mary Bishop and her family also dealing with COVID. And uh, God, we just ask that you would change lives, that you would heal, that you would restore. And not only would you heal the bodies, but you would heal the spirits, that, that as you restore these people to health, that they would know and the doctors and nurses would know that it's only by your grace and your power that recovery was possible. God, we, we come asking for a miracle. We pray over all the coronavirus-related things, whether it's these new ordinances and mandates, whether it's these travel restrictions, what, uh, what have you. God, we just pray that you would eliminate coronavirus. Maybe, God, may you wipe it out before vac vaccines are even ready. What a mighty act it would be. But God, even if, if that's not so, we pray that you would keep us safe. Uh, give us wisdom to act properly. Give us wisdom to act accordingly. Give us grace uh, when someone acts in a, in a way other than that, we, other than one we would have chosen. God, we pray that you would keep us safe, that you would allow us to keep others safe. And we pray that the if it's your will, that, that you'd be with all those creating vaccines, that they would be effective and safe, that we could remove the words coronavirus from our collective memory. God, we thank you for this time. We put it all in your hands. Help us to love our enemies the way you've loved us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Spread the gospel, not the coronavirus. Have a safe Thanksgiving. I'll see some of you on Sunday, uh, either in the building or online. And again, you can watch these on YouTube later. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to say before we sign off. There will We will not be here next Wednesday um, because it's the day before Thanksgiving. So enjoy that extra time. Uh, we will not see you next Wednesday. All right. Have a good evening. Love your enemies. See you later. <laughs>